he said the brakes the brakes in the other tuk tuk were not working jay and i just looked at each other like what the hell Yo, g'day and good morning guys from a UTR province. We're in a province about an hour just outside of Bangkok and today we're going to be showing you some amazing temples and what there is to do in a UTR. So a UTR is an hour just outside of Bangkok. I'm here with my friend Jay. We got a private taxi here using the InDrive app and you get to set your own pricing. But what I do is I set it for something really, really low, like 10 baht, which is like 50 cents. Then the app recommends you the lowest price possible. So we paid 500 baht to get here, which is about an hour's drive. So 500 baht is about 20 Australian dollars, about 15 US dollars. Split that between two people, 10 Australian dollars each. I feel like it's a much better way than the train to be honest with you because you get door-to-door -door service from your hotel in Bangkok straight to a UTR. I'm in a lovely Airbnb. Um, this place split between two people is only 25 Australian dollars per night. So about 17 US dollars. Beautiful place right on the river. With, um, Jay actually found this place on Airbnb. So it's a lovely, lovely spot. We're here for three nights and then we're going back to Bangkok and then I'm off to a new country. So I won't tell you guys what country that is. Write in the comments if you can guess what country it is. It is in Asia and it obviously is open. So that's all the hints I'll give you. Today we're going to be exploring some amazing temples. I think we're going to either try and hire out a tuk-tuk for the whole entire day or just get um, some grab taxis to each place that we want to go. Um, I'll keep you guys posted on that one. We're just trying to work it out with the pricing and budget. I believe a tuk-tuk is about 800 baht for the day, which is about 30 Australian dollars or something like that. But we might be able to hire some grabs and pay probably four dollars each time we go somewhere so we'll just see how that goes to get the cheapest option strap yourselves in grab a tea grab a beer grab a water whatever you want to drink sit back relax and let's explore a UTR the only way to do it only way to do it all right so Let's go to this temple. Tiny, tiny little, uh, little youths. This is my legs and that's the end. Radio, so we've made it into the first temple. I just bought a ticket which apparently what they said it allows me to go to every single temple today for only 220 baht otherwise all every single temple I would be paying I think around 50 baht that's what they told me so let's see how that goes but I just saw the sign coming in if you're if you're coming here obviously wear respectful clothing no singlet for the women you can't wear shorts I believe it has to you need to wear long pants or a dress uh, down to your down to your ankles first impressions this is um really really old relic structure is so old you can see the dips in the pathway from the erosion over time like you can see that that is definitely not level let me tell you if I put a soccer ball here 
it would roll straight down into there. It's probably hard to see on camera. This place is really uneven, but that's expected because it is very, very old. So we're now at the second temple. We are at Wat Yai Chai Mon Hon Kron. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. The names here are so difficult. We're here at the second temple. Um, these temples are way nicer. It's a lot more kept. Yeah, we're going to walk around and check it out. The leaves and everything are all swept up and the grass is all mowed. It's a not light. It's a quite a nicer place and um, the temples looked a lot more maintained. So um, yeah, let's go check it out. which will take us around for the whole day. We'll be able to get lunch, go to whatever temples we want. It doesn't matter what distance, just as long as it's in a UTR for the whole day. And that was only 800 baht, which is about, yeah, 30 Australian dollars. So that was the best option. Yeah, our tuk-tuk driver's just waiting in the car park. As soon as we come out, picks us up, we go to the next place. So it's much easier that way. I think you probably could save a little bit of money getting a grab to each temple. But by the time you see five temples, you've already, you know, spent 500 baht and then you've got to wait for the grab in the hot sun. So I think it's just better to get a tuk-tuk. A holy place, but you could see how amazing that was. That was a pretty amazing sight. This is my first lot of temples that I've been to in Thailand. So I'm really, really loving it so far. So what a morning it has been. So, came back to pick up Jay, and um, this morning has been absolutely crazy. So the driver's lost his phone, and then he went to the police station, so we had to wait another 10 minutes. We're now in a different tuk-tuk. I have no idea what's going on, but we're having fun. We'll see where life brings us, eh? It's all about the adventure, so um, yeah. Let's um let's turn this around and um let's have a good day. <laughs> But we're in a new tuk-tuk, if I didn't mention that before. And I said to the guy, I said, where's your other tuk-tuk? He said, oh, uh, uh, break, break, break no work. <laughs> break no work. <laughs> Mate, we could have died. Thank God we got a um, new tuk-tuk. That could have been really bad. The brake's not working. Oh my gosh. Anyway, this is Thailand. Radio, so I was just reading that information and these temples here started construction in 1374. So what's that? That's like 600 years ago or something. Absolutely crazy. So this temple that we're at right now is quite a famous temple. It's known for the um, 
for the Buddha's head where the tree roots grew around it and you can just see the Buddha's head so we're going to try and find that now I'm not too sure where it's located around here so you can see some of the statues here have sort of fallen apart and they were statues of of Buddha I'm not sure if this statue I'm about to show you is a new one, but it's very, very well intact. So we've got this statue here. So this statue could be potentially 600 years old if it hasn't been replaced already. Doesn't that just blow your mind? It's stuff like this that you don't get to see every day, you know. When you come traveling, get out, explore, go outside, see different things. That's what traveling is all about. Like today, I can come home and say I've just went and saw a 600, a 600 year old temple relic and a Buddha's head in between tree roots. Like it's just these things when you're traveling that you get to experience. It just amazes me. You know, on the drive here, we saw many temples, like little ones, little relics, just scattered all across the UTR. They're just protected, you know, no one builds on the land or anything like that. So even though these temples are really, really old, they're still not used and pe people don't, you know, demolish them and put their business over their business over the top of it, which is really nice. But check out this wall. So you can see that it's being held up here by man-made pillars, which have probably been added more recently to actually keep the structure, um, to keep the structure up. If you can see though, it is on a slant. I don't know how well the camera picks that up, but you can definitely see that. This is such an amazing sight, like, this just blows my mind, a, a, a religious, um, like, person or, or God, like the Buddha, and for the roots to grow around its face, which is, in theory, one of the most important parts of the body is your face, is just astounding. Um, I'm sort of lost for words at the moment, but what you have to do is when you take a photo in front of it, you actually have to kneel down and be on level with the Buddha, which makes sense because you don't want to stand over it. Um, and then on this grass patch here, you can't actually stand. You actually have to sit there to take a photo. But this is this is really, really cool. So as you can see here, it's held up by this brick wall and all the roots are growing in and out of the brick wall. It's just it's something magical. Some people may say, oh, like, you know, it's fake, right? Someone's came here and molded, molded the roots over time around the Buddha's head, but I don't think so because half of the Buddha actually has to be in the ground because I believe it is a full statue. So I think it is just by, you know, by chance or, or if you're, if, if you're a Buddhist, you believe that it's meant to be, but I, I, I'm, I'm actually absolutely flabbergasted. I think that's um, really, really cool. I believe that either this statue here or this one here was actually the statue where the head fell off on the Buddha and it grew around the tree roots, right? So that's really, really cool. I, I didn't know that. So yeah, the head actually fell off. It got stuck in the tree roots and over time the tree roots grew around the head, but it kept the head intact some 600 years ago. So yeah, well, wow. that's really, really impressive. So as you can see here, the brickwork is extremely old and there's obviously been additional cement added, but if I want, like, if you put enough force on it, you could literally, like this one here, you can sort of lift it up, but I won't mess with it too much. It's 
one of my first times seeing a squirrel in Thailand. I saw one in um, in Indonesia, but they're really, really cool. Apparently they're all, all around the world, but Australia doesn't have them. I just find them fascinating little creatures. They're a little bit like possums, but like the size of like a rat. <laughs> possums are smelly. Possums are smelly, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah You guys yeah. got kangaroos. Yeah. We ride kangaroos to school, if anyone didn't know that. All the Australians out there can confirm that we ride kangaroos to school. Also for the ladies as well, at pretty much all of these major temples there's always um, elephant pants or uh, skirt, uh, sorry, dresses dress bottoms that you can buy if you come in shorts there's always something around that can save you so don't worry about that you'll be right so now we're off to the next destination we're actually getting some river prawns apparently they're massive prawns about this big or something like that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they come out straight from the river here? yeah yeah cool they're, cool cool they're, they're really famous here for the river prawn you know yeah, yeah go yeah. check it out yeah sweet so um yeah we're gonna go and get some food and check out the river prawns Rightio, so the Tuk Tuk driver has brought us to a seafood restaurant on the river. Now I just spoke before about getting the massive shrimp or massive prawns, the massive river prawns. We had a look at the prices and it's about $60 per prawn. So we're thinking we might be able to find something cheaper maybe tonight or tomorrow night in the night market. So I've went with a pad thai with prawns, so we'll see how that comes out. So back to what I was saying before about the tuk-tuk driver losing his phone. So he came to pick me up from the second temple and like when I walked out of the second temple, he wasn't there. And the other tuk-tuk drivers were saying, oh, he just went to get petrol. Anyway, he came back and he said, oh, I've lost my phone. So anyway, so we went back to pick up Jay because he was on a, on a business call and um, the tuk-tuk driver just left and my camera and everything was in the back and our hotel lady said that he went to file a police report because of his phone so he thinks someone's actually stolen his phone or, or something or maybe he's filing a police report for insurance I'm not sure but and then we asked him why, why are you in a different tuk-tuk and he said the brakes the brakes and the other tuk-tuk were not working Jay and I just looked at each other like, what the hell? Could you imagine going down the highway and his brakes not working? <laughs> you know, when you're traveling, these things happen once a week, easily. You just, there's stories that, that come up and these crazy memories. And you know, yes, it's dangerous that he didn't have brakes in his car, like the brakes weren't working, but it's things like this that you remember for the rest of your life, you know? You're not going to remember the 60th time you showed up to work, right? It's crazy stuff like this, these crazy adventures and, and crazy things that you just think, wow. So that's why I want to share it with you guys. That's why I make these videos, to give an insight on different things around the world and how crazy it can be sometimes. Foods came out. And um, it looks really, really good. Take a look at this. So we've got Pad Thai with tiger prawns. There's actually more prawns underneath this, but you can't see it. Jay's got his omelette rice. And we've also got, what's this? Squid uh, and... Squid, uh, steamed squid with chili lime. I don't know if you can see, guys, but underneath here, he's just, uh, he's just lit a flame to keep that nice and hot. So, um, yeah, this is our whole meal. And we're gonna dig in and enjoy. So I'm just gonna try some of this squid, uh, lime and chili. And um, Jay was just saying that they put squid eggs in there as well. So um, let's give this a try. Whoa. That is really, really nice. Sorry if I made a weird face then. I didn't expect the, the hit of flavor. 
r really, really rich in chili, but not too spicy. It's a very mild chili. Um, and then the lime in there with that, and then the fresh squid. Oh, amazing. And the broth too. Mmm. See, that's the... That's the broth there. So I'm gonna try out my pad thai now. So we've got the tiger prawns with the, uh, just a classic pad thai. Those tiger, those tiger prawns are really, really good. Nutty flavor with all of the peanuts crushed in. I've sprinkled over some lime before. Yeah, really, really nice. Can't complain. So now we're actually at what they call Angkor Wat, but we're not actually in Cambodia, guys. We're in Thailand. They've developed a sort of copy of Angkor Wat. Um, they must have done this many years ago because the buildings do look really, really old. But um, this is really cool. I had no idea that they did something like this. So let's go check it out. crazy how statues like this still stand to this day. Sure they've lost a few arms or legs but the majority of the main ones are still intact. But um, first, of, first impressions of this, this one is a lot more intact than the others. You see a lot less cement on the walls which they've done to sort of claim, claim the temple and, and keep it alive. So um, the build quality on this 600 years ago is outstanding something like this but like this is all old wood here looks like a hardwood or something you can see it's corroded over time but yeah first impressions really really cool so as you can see here behind me this is actually the work that they do there they're rebuilding, they're putting on cement, they're still keeping the same historical artifacts and feel, and trying to preserve everything as much as they can, but obviously after 600 years, it does need a little bit of maintenance, but it's really good to see. Some of the detail that are on these um, Buddha statues is just incredible. Considering they're 600 years old, the time it must have taken to carve out that on the Buddha is just insane. It's crazy to think about, especially with not modern day machinery like we have today. Even with modern machinery, it still takes a long time. I actually had no idea, but this temple actually backs straight onto the river, which is a nice touch. We just came down here and saw the river, so it's awesome. You see, these temples are in really, really nice places. You know, you're not going to build something that will take, you know, I don't know how long it takes, maybe like 10 years or something like that, to put it on a really crap piece of land. You know, you want to put it on something that's really beautiful, peaceful, spiritual, and props to the people who made this 600 years ago. We're actually at a really modern temple now, uh, and it looks to be Chinese. Yeah, it's a Chinese one. A Chinese temple. Yeah, so, yeah. is this still Buddhism, Jay? Is this yeah, right? yeah. Um, in in Chinese, we have like a lot of um, separate uh, domination. We'll call it as Taoism. Yeah. And uh, people do uh, uh, pay respects to like Quan Yin. Uh, so we over there. Um, we we'll yeah. just bring them. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a go ingots. So we call them Tai Shen Ye. Tai Shen Ye is like. Um, got our money so during Chinese New Year uh, we say Gong Xi Fa Sai or Gong Wei Fa Toi it means hope you get rich that's how Chinese people we love money you know that is Chai Sen Ye so we we pray our respects and pray to him for money 
Yeah, that's Chinese people for you. walking through the floating market now and as you saw from my previous floating market video the market isn't actually floating guys the um the stalls are just raised up above the water um, unfortunately there's not many people here and a lot of the stuff is actually closed every place that is open that we walk past people are trying to pull us in which is fair enough it's it's really really sad to see actually this boardwalk here is falling apart. Jay almost fell through before. <laughs> We're just gonna go for a walk around, maybe get some food or just see what the vibe is. But Look, have you eaten boat noodle? Boat noodle. Yeah, it's 15 baht a bowl. Ooh, that's good. You wanna try one? Yeah, yeah 15 baht, yeah. that's like 50 cents. All right, let's do it. So we went to order our um, boat noodle and it's actually all in Thai, which is fun. So we just used Google Translate and then just sort of pointed at what we wanted. So our boat noodle is 15 baht. So yeah, really, really cheap. So let's see how it comes out. So let's give this a try. Got a bit of meat. You know, I learned how to use chopsticks three days before I left for Thailand. So it's really came in handy actually. I've needed them more than what I've imagined, but Here's the uh, meat and noodle. So let's give this a try. Yeah, really delicious. A nice sort of beefy broth, hence the, hence the meat. Um, noodles are lovely, the lemongrass. Yeah, really, really good. And then we've got like some type of meatball or something here. Yeah, really good can't complain for 70 cents I mean you can't go wrong okay so we absolutely demolished it. those bowls so now I think we're going to call it a day actually and go back to the hotel I'm actually filming on my phone at the moment I ran through all of my three batteries today so apologies for the little bit of bad quality towards the end here but I'm sure it'll be fine but yeah if you're watching up to this point Thank you so much, I appreciate it. As always, keep it real. Cheers.